Hey everybody, uh, Keith here. Uh, Mark is uh, Mark is there. Um, he's the other tiny box. And uh, today <laughs> we are going to paint. Uh, it's kind of like a little watercolor study of a bluebird. You know, something cute. Hopefully short, because uh, that's what to me that's what a study is. I just want to get the feel of this bird. You know, it doesn't have to be one hundred percent, but I. I I want a little bit of accuracy for this because I've been doing uh, naturalist art with children and, uh, oh, you didn't see that, children, and uh, the children are getting bigger and they <laughs> and older, so it's getting fun. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get started by, um, I'm assuming almost everybody knows what a bluebird looks like. It's like a cardinal, but it's blue, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it's got a, it's got a, a brownish chest, a white bottom, a white bottom, just like me, uh, and a blue top. You know, so it's like a Chrysler or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, but they are. I, I love them. I rarely see them. It makes me crazy too. Um, it's like those cedar wax wings. So the, those are the two birds that I think are the coolest, most beautiful birds that I never see, you know? It's like living in Hawaii and seeing dolphins on the, like the last week that you're there after 10 years. Same before difference. before yep. Keith gets too far into this and keeps rambling on about Hawaii. You uh, know what? I, I, had, I had a life once, you know? Now I'm in a little box at the... Anyway, go ahead. Uh, we did put a the line drawing of this bird on his website, so if you want to download it to print out and copy over to some watercolor paper to follow along, you can do that. Links are in the description, as well as other uh, links to goodies and things on Keith's website. So go check the description before we get too involved. Uh, full material list, all that kind of stuff is included. Awesome. So... Uh you didn't you didn't cover the bird in water How, what the what the hell not. are you doing well if you notice this is one of the first times that i am not doing the background not doing the sky first i'm going to do the bird that's to me that's the main thing so what i did is i used a little bigger brush and you're right i used a little bigger brush and i filled it up with paint and some water and so it's not as you can see, if I as I drop the paint down, it's not real heavy, and I can uh, I can get the it's almost like a, a a light base coat of the blue because when I come in with another coat in a little bit, I'm going to be trying to pull out some uh, light and dark areas, so shadowing or you know reflection off of feathers. Same difference? No. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of hitting it with color. And I like to I leave I like to leave a little air in it. I, I, I'm kind of assuming this is the light area. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. But I'm just kind of coming in. And like I said, I have a big brush. Well, it's a 10, I believe. Let me look. It is a 10. Whoop, whoop. And uh so it holds a lot of water, so I can get a lot of paint down. This bird is kind of contracted up very tightly. Kind of reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, in the wintertime when they they sit on a branch, they kind of poof up a little bit and just hunker down against the, uh, against the breeze. Well, that's a whole bird story there, Keith. You must be uh, one of them birder guys. Yes. You must have an exciting life. Yes. Anyway, as you can see, all I'm doing is kind of dragging my paint down on the brush, on, on, you know, following the pattern. If you'll notice, I left a little light areas here just in case. So I can go in. What I like to do is sometimes I like to leave some highlights in those feathers so it isn't all just one value. So I left a little. So I'm going to stop there. Um... Did you say which blue you were using? Oh, well, I am using. So it's kind of funny. I think these uh, bluebirds look like they are ultramarine blue 
when it's wet, when the water is wet. But when it dries, it dries a lot duller. And what I did was I added a little phthalo blue to the ultramarine blue. And I'm getting a color that I think is pretty darn close. It's kind of funny about these birds, man. You catch them in the right light, man. They're almost like neon blue. Um, so uh, this is not bad as far as uh, for me and what I've seen. And you're, you're going to say, well, you've only seen three of them, you know, Mr. Burger. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, so it's mostly ultramarine blue. But now I'm coming in and with a little bit of... Uh, uh, more paint. Now, I didn't wet it again. You can see what I'm doing. A little more paint, a little darker. And I'm just kind of, since these are kind of tightly packed feathers, I'm just kind of getting these in right now. That's what I like about this scene. It's fairly uncomplicated. It's turned just enough that you don't have to worry about getting all those feathers all lined up and and doing it correctly you know this is a this is a nice pose this is a kind of you get to do something without you know uh killing yourself to do it um uh, where am i hmm, okay so at this point i'm gonna check and see up here where i started um yep it's still a little bit wet so what i'm gonna do what I like to do is come in while it's still a little bit damp and just kind of fill in where I think maybe the shadows should be or where shadows, where highlights should be. So I'm blasting this uh, color in pretty thick now. Let's see the water. You can see how it moves. It is, uh, it's still damp. Now, I'll bet you down here it's actually dried or drier or dried um, much more than this was because I put down a lot of a lot of paint up there, a lot of water, too. So tell you what, we're going to let that set up because I can always go back and add or subtract using the power of Mr. Clean. But uh I think that looks pretty good. So while that's going on, I'm going to very lightly, they have a white bottom, but you don't leave it white. It's got to have some shadow, right? Some, you know, kind of make this bird round and poofy. So I'm going to, I'm going to add some of this ultramarine blue without the, uh, without the uh, phthalo, uh, just plain old ultramarine blue. Add a little bit of water. And I'm going to add a tiny touch of burnt sienna. And I just kind of graze it down a, le a little bit. I'm also going to try just a little bit of the, uh, uh, what is that, yellow ochre. But don't you have a gray paint right there I see next to the yellow? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, kind of a muddy, um, uh, what is that? Oh, what's that called? I can't think of it. It's an off-white. It's like ugly off-white. I don't know why they... But it. I think it mixes well with other colors. But what I'm going to do here, this gray, it's uh, going to be fairly light. So I'm going to kind of gray down around and under here. Just, you know, give this bird a little life. And again, I'm not going to wet it. It's a, This is a small picture. We can get away with a lot. So I'm not going to wet it. I'm just going to kind of put the color where I think the shadow is going to end up. So I think it, it's going to come up here a little bit too. And back here, I think it's going to be heavily shadowed. So I'm just going to hit that. All right. Was that a kitty sneeze? What was that? I, I can't know. see you. You're hearing shit. You what? Stuff. You're hearing stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. Stuff. It sounded like sneezes. Nope. Yeah, I'm old. All right, so is that showing up okay? Yeah, I think so. I'm just waiting to see how you're going to bring out the, the wing, because if the wing's white feathers too... 
No, there ain't much. Uh, no, there ain't. Much, it's all blue on top. Oh. So this is all mostly the front of the bird. So it's all puffy, downy kind of feathers, and oh. all this stuff is tucked back around. So you don't you don't really even see it. I'm just going to keep darkening that up a little bit until it's uh, a nice shadow um, on the back there. So now I'm going to take a little smaller brush. What I want to do is take that same color and I'm going to see if I can, if it's too wet, I want to see if I can do a little line work. Eh, I think it's a little too wet yet. But I want, I want it to show up, too, which it will because the other, the background is going to be dark. So, anyway, um, let me add just a little more of that and that. Ooh, that was a lot. So I'm mixing, uh, again, the yellow ochre the, and the uh, ultramarine blue. I want to see if I can get it just a little bit darker yet. Now, I'm not doing any fine line yet. I'm just still doing value, I think. I think that's going to work. All right. So, where are we? All dry. Very good. So, I am going to take a little of that burnt sienna once again. And mix it with our uh, our blue. Gray it down a lot. And this is going to be in here. Now I'm using a fine brush. So I can kind of show that it's a fluffy feathered uh, bird now. If I... Uh, ha! That's still wet in there. So I can't quite yet. I'm just creating a, a little bit of shadow right now under that first, uh, under the wing there. And then the other wing is over here. And this is just a base color. It's going to get a lot darker. It's amazing. Your birds always sit at the very end of the branch, never in the middle. So my birds are always leader birds that are right They're right up there on the top telling everybody else what to do no maybe <laughs> never heard that gonna, term before but uh, no, i was I'm gonna not, say you're gonna, you're gonna give me one? Oh my god I'm not here to argue <laughs> i accept so as you can see i'm coming down under here i'm adding now i'm adding a little bit of violet to my blue because i'm i, I want to kind of shadow that under there and right now, I think on the screen, it looks a little, a little gray, but it's a, uh, it's a little more, it's a, it's a blue gray. I think we got to wait for it to kind of dry up a little bit before you'll be able to see it. Okay. Um, and then like the last thing is this, uh, these tail feathers under here. Excuse me. So it was you sneezing. Nope, hiccups. COVID! Oh, I already had it again, I think, this year. I'm good. Oh, man. And that's why we do this on Zoom. And I hate driving 45 miles because I'm not a driver all right so i've kind of got this bottom side kind of shadowed up now we're going to let that dry up i think in the meantime i'm going to come up to the top i'm going to start laying in a little detail here i'm going to do the eyes and the uh and the beak and i may have to flip this over so sorry but i'm left-handed and i think it'll be easier What's he doing? Making so what I'm all do, nauseous. Yeah. Well, they're like, should we turn over the, what? Uh, never mind. 
Anyway, um, I am looking for my indigo. All right, first try. Indigo, I just got here. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. Last week I was fighting that indigo for half of that video and uh, find out it's a different. <laughs> that ain't indigo, this is. But thank you. If only they had a chart that told you which colors were which. <laughs> it was similar. It was similar. Anyway, what I like to do with these guys is I do want, when I do this kind of stuff, I like to have a really thin brush, okay? A nice point on it, sharp. So I'm just gonna go in. And what I like to do is hit the top, but see how I leave little bits of light in there? Can you? Yes, you can see it, all right. And then the other thing I do is I'll come back in. And when I do the bottom, I leave that white line there to help divide the uh, the beak there. Uh, you know, the mouth, the opening, the orifice. I'm so confused because uh, cartoons told me that every bird has yellow or orange beaks. It's true. I'm uh, I'm I'm teaching everybody funny. That's what I wanted to do with my son, was teach him the wrong words to things and see how long before he came and beat me up. Hmm. I figured he'd be about two and a half. Dad, you're a jerk. Yes, he is. All right, so now what I like to do is I'll come in and I will add a little bit of water. And what it's going to do is that water is going to push that paint, that indigo, up along the edges, and you'll get some nice, nice crip, crip, crips, yeah, crips and bloods, um, some nice crips, can't say it, crisp edges, there we go. So I'm gonna let that dry because I want those sharp, crispy edges. I can go back in, I can add actually more um, detail to it. Uh, now I'm gonna go for the eye. No. So when I'm doing a dark eye, when the, you know you can't see the, it has, you know, some birds have red eyes and cool eyes and yellow eyes. Um, so I'm going to need some indigo and some black, or some indigo and some uh, burnt sienna once again. And more to the indigo side. And what I'm going to do, let's see here. Oh, I'm falling. Is I'm going to go above that white dot. And I'm going to try to paint as dark as I can. And try to leave a white line around the edge of the eye. Can't you just go over it with some white watercolor paint? I would rather die. You're very uh, emphatic about that. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, no. I mean, you could. And there are some products out there, but I think it's, I'm just, you can tell when you look at it, you know? You look at it and you go, that's that, that's opaque paint, that's ugly. You just, uh, just a nice clean brush, nice and sharp. So you can see I'm doing like half the eye. Nope, can't see shit through your thumb. Oh, that stupid thumb. All right, can you see now? Well, yeah, your thumb's not in the way. Yep. All right, let's see if I can get my, I'm gonna turn this around again, let's see what happens here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to kind of give this a, a bit of an oval. Okay. 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 And now, let's see if we can try this again. 
Whee. Now I'm going to take a brush with water. There isn't anything else in it, but it's not real wet. I tapped it kind of a little bit on my pants, you know, to dry it. You guys can't see that. But as you can see, I'm going to just now drag some of this color down. But I'm trying to leave that little bit of uh, a lighter value at the bottom there. And then the dark and then the, the little, you know, point of reflection. And if you don't got a real sharp brush, then I would buy that white stuff. But, you know, it's not going to work anyway because you need a good brush for that too. So I'm just coming in at the top again. You don't need a really big dot or anything. You just need one, you know? So if you lose a little of it, that's okay. Don't all right, lose it a, all. I got a dumb question for you. Yes. I have you said You said a good brush, a sharp brush. So I'm a cheapskate. I've got some brushes I've had forever. Can I hit them with a pair of scissors and kind of trim them up and make them sharp again? No, mm. I don't think so. Do they I have really... a brush sharpener like a pencil that I can just stick it in and it goes zzz and... That would be cool. And um, I, I really, I don't know of anything, you know, how to shave a brush or how to, you know what I mean? I've never, it's just, to me, it's time to move on, you know? I mean, they do it somehow at the factory, right? I can't imagine that the machine puts them in at that perfect taper. There's got to be something yes, that... Yes, they do. Yes, they do. What? It's a, in fact, I'll tell you what, it's kind of weird how it is. It's kind of weird, but I actually took a class on how to, it was, uh, and I can't remember a bit of it other than it's kind of how you grab the bristles and when they, it, it just, it's amazing. And yeah, <laughs> they probably have to trim it a little bit. You may be right, but I don't remember that at all. It was how they grabbed it and they just kind of pull it until that middle just comes out, you know what I mean? All the way to a, just okay. a hair, you know? I was like, this is cool. So anyway, um, so as you can see, my eye, not my eye, but this eye, it's got a little bit of lightness on the, on the bottom there. It just gives it that roundness, that little bit of roundness that kind of brings it more to life. It, that's how I kind of feel about it. Anyway, um, I am going to now come in with the a little more dark on this beak. I'm working dry. It's all pretty much detail stuff, you know. Could so you move it some... up so we can see it? Are we out of the way? Uh, Thank you. Sorry. I mean, we like the new black background, but we'd like to see the painting more. Yeah. You know, it cost me a dollar. Well, a buck twenty-five. Those things have gone up. Yep. What do you call them? I'm talking about the stores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dollar stores are now. Yeah, you mean the buck twenty-five stores now? Yep. Which I thought was kind of funny. Just quit calling them dollar stores. They're just gonna add s's to the end, so it's dollars stores. There you go. Well, I liked how Dollar General did it. We're not getting locked into anything, you know? Mm -hmm. We're the general. We can do what we want. All right, come on now. So, I'm just kind of trying to blend this a little bit. So it, too, has a little bit of roundness to it. So... The bottom, I want it, you know, a little darker at the bottom here. Dragging the, uh, what would that be, a bird lip? Maybe. Yeah, nobody even knows what I'm babbling about right now. All right. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get his mouth. There we go. All right. Oh my god. Color's pretty similar. I, you know, uh, camera wise and everything. 
Um, I think it's just a little brighter on the screen, but uh, it's it's not bad. All right. So at this point, we're going to not play with that for a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and now I'm going to wet this thing because I want this belly to appear soft and uh, and poofy, um, which is one of my that's a technical term, I think. So this color is that I'm about to apply is um, quinacridin. Um, it's either rust or burnt orange. Uh, they're both so similar I couldn't tell you tell them apart. I like that color for uh, it's just a pretty pretty brown. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the area where the where the brown's going to go, and I'm going to, you know, avoid coming down here where I, you know, where the belly is with the shadow. I don't want to, well, I do. I want to kind of wet it sufficiently because I'm probably going to end up kind of pushing paint around to get effects. Dun, dun, dun. And right. now we almost passed study on to. Hey, wait a minute, you're sleeping. Sorry, I was looking at uh, my phone, told me something important was happening. That a, a signal was coming from the government at 220. Yep. Get your tinfoil hats on. Got a, oh my God! I was in the parking lot of this, uh, you know, store that I'm, I live near. I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, I'm dropping in the color. Nice big clumps. Uh, I want it to spread. I want it to do stuff. I want the paint to be. I want the water to do some of the work. So I'm just letting it spread out a little bit. I was gonna break into a tail, but. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I, I understand my my younger students are kind of reminding me. You've told that one already twice, old man. Yeah, but you've been in my class a long time. Yeah. They don't want to hear the cockroach story anymore. Anyway, as you can see, I'm just letting it kind of spread, you know? And if there's light and dark areas, actually, that's kind of what I'm looking for is some light and dark areas. Um, I don't want it to appear too uh, one value. I want it to look like fluffy feathers. Fluffy. So down here in this area, towards the back here at the bottom, at the bottom, um, you can kind of see how I, I don't actually hit the whole thing. I'm just going to let it kind of bleed out to whatever it's going to do. Now in here, down here, you can kind of see the line work I did. Um, I kind of want to get that feeling. I don't know. Get that feeling of almost individual feathers here without going uh, insane overdoing it and and to keep a randomness to it so that they don't look like they're all you know like a machine like cogs in a in a gear okay you see so a little different angles a little this a little that now what i like to do is sometimes i like to bleed a little color not everywhere, but I like to bleed a little of that color to where it maybe shouldn't be. There. So see how it kind of softens it up a little bit? Everybody nod your heads. Thank you. All right. So at this point, um, this is like my, uh, like my setup. So at this point, I know in here now I'm dropping in it's still wet 
wet on wet, but I'm using uh, more color, less water. And I'm kind of pushing color now where I really want some intensity. So it looks like a nice line of feathers there. Here's another row coming. Now it's going to bleed out. But at least I got in the main areas where I, I need it. The rows where I really, you can kind of see where it comes up into the blue. Where I need to have them kind of push up in there. I, he looks like Rip Van Winkle with his beard. All right. And at this point, I can't do any more with that. I have to let it dry so that I can go back and then work with it some more. So, should I make this a dead branch, Mark? It's. Uh, I would expect nothing less. Yeah, thank you. A dried right, so, out grayish yep. branch. Yep, husk, a mere husk. And then are we going to do the uh, tie-dye background like you talked about? The psychedelic tie-dye color splashes? What? 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 I hate. I hate more than one color. <laughs> no. He's not comfortable with it. I mean, that's what your paintings are missing. Yep, color. Hmm. The psychedelic aspect. Yeah. That's what we've been waiting for. All right, so again, I'm just dry brushing this in, and the trick is I'm not hitting everything. So the areas that I'm hitting now will be the darker areas when I come in with a wash over top of that. So I'm going to hit it with, I think I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Yep, it's gone. It's not burnt umber. Oh, sepia. You know, we gotta write we gotta write the names down on the cans. I'm getting too old. I can't, I can't remember the names of anything anymore. Children, food, all right. So again, I like to leave, leave bits of light in there. Leave, leave areas that can remain lighter. Um, but what I like to do too, is I like to come in, hit them with some dark little little spots here and there. That's kind of what I like about nature. You just try to give it a, a little, a little more energy than just a stick. Oh, right, we should so. paint a, like a road with a McDonald's in the background. And then it's a whole uh, story. Uh, yeah, it, it's a statement about how nature is being uh, corrupted by the commercial greed of corporations. And that's why this bird doesn't even get a full stick to stand on. Well, <laughs> doesn't have a stick to stand on. <laughs> nice. All right. You libertarians, you're all the same. All right, here we go. All right, so as you can see, it's it's moist. I, I throw color in, it moves around. If you put too much in or if it's too wet, it'll all just go poof, and it'll be one color. So, you know, you got to kind of judge it a little bit. You know me, I like to judge, so... Anyway, I'm going to come a little bit up under his uh, 
under his uh, feet here. I'm just going to hit these lighter areas. I need it to be, I think, dark enough that the white areas on his belly will show up properly. So I got to get some value up there too. Uh, where am I at? Yeah. All right. I'm going to let that, let that dry. So we're getting there. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead, since this area should be probably pretty good and dry. What's that go Bugs ahead. Bunny? Is it a Bugs Bunny cartoon where the bird's on a stick and he does this and all of a sudden there's two birds and he does it again <laughs> and there's three birds the magic magic trick yeah I can't remember what show that was damn oh my god now you're getting old we're in trouble so I'm coming uh, under here now this is kind of supposed to be in shadow so we don't want, we, we want it to, I want people to realize it's blue, or was blue, or is blue, but I don't want it to be, see that's not right right there, that, I'm going to take that out, sorry. I need it kind of grayed down, but not too... Not too gray. So I'm gonna try that yellow ochre again. Because I want it kind of dark in there. And right now it, it might look dark, but when we go to put that background on in the background, it it won't be. So And maybe a little purple just to change the color of the shadow a little bit. See, right now when it's wet, it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. There. Yep, you can kind of see the colors now that I'm... But don't forget, this is still wet, boys and girls. So it might dry a little different color, but I like the variation of the blues and the purples in there. And it's not all just purple, brown, you know, it's actually got, I'm dropping color into color and letting it just kind of spread out. Now, a lot of times that comes out real pretty and, uh, and sometimes it don't. So, you know, you just got to experiment to you. That's what painting's about is figuring out what, what, effects you can create what effects that you can create all right so i got that kind of shadowed in down there kind of the where i want it um i'm gonna i need to see what i'm doing don't look all right Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a coat of that violet. I'm going to go right down the back, too. So, I think I am going to wet this a little bit, all right? Now, I'm not going to get it soppy or anything. I'm just, I want it, I want it damp so that when I apply the color, it'll come down. It'll move nicer, <laughs> nicely nicer so oops all right 
You can't oops and not explain yourself. Oh, there's a... I'm sorry. Uh, there's a... You know, the eraser crumb or whatever you call it. Mm. Sometimes it's easier to just let it dry and take it out when it's done. All right, so... Again, so I got a little bit of that violet in there. And I'm going to come in with the make sure I got it here with the uh, with the Quinn gold over top of that violet not Quinn gold I'm sorry burnt orange because they have a little bit of this brown kind of like all through here and there okay that is not a crumb Looks like I scratched the paper a little bit. All right, so now I've got some color in there. I'm gonna let that dry. So you gotta do it in bits and chunks, okay? So I might be able to do the head now. Yeah, so it's all dry. Basically, all I'm gonna do is gonna paint you, me some feathers. Can you move it back up so we can see more? No. <laughs> Maybe. All right, hang on. Let's see what I got. All right. That became the wrong color. I think I just screwed up. Sorry. All right. Try this again. Um. And that's what it was. Oh, okay. All right. Should be okay now. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start basically with a fine line and I'm just going to start kind of brushing in some strokes and if you have a good brush you know you can get crazy but it, you know if just if you're not comfortable at least you know get a, a few in there just so it feels like you can really see the line of where the like Here's what I'm doing. It's, you can almost see it there. You know that those feathers are going in that direction. Now I'm pushing color into the brown to just represent a little more feathering. Can we see okay? There's my big yeah. fat, big fat thumbs in the way again. No, like I said, okay. I, I, I get to work and I look up and uh oh, <laughs> that ain't right. Not real ready. So, the other thing is, as you get closer to the beak, if you're gonna do any line work. Make sure it's not too long, because those are short feathers up there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. Everything that I did, I'm not going to leave it hard. I'm going to kind of just soften it a little bit using my brush. I want to see some of the line work to stay, but I want some of it to kind of blend in a little bit. So, and I know it sounds weird, but it's like a process. You almost got to do it a couple, two, three times, but right now, I did say this was a study, so we're just going to kind of relax and go with the flow here. What I'm doing is I'm just adding a little of that blue back down there. Again. Back here. Feathers are a little longer. 
So you notice I kind of give him a little bit of a curve as you're kind of rolling down his shoulder there. Coming up under the brown a little. All right, so again, I'm gonna take a wet brush and I just softened up some of it. Just kind of so that I have just see these little areas of light. That's the areas I didn't touch with water. And now I just keep coming down. This is dried up in here a little bit. And now I can just kind of come in and those little bits of color are there. But we need some little dark on the back end here. So that's all I'm doing. That's a little bit better. All right. Now, let's see if I can get this feather pattern to work. What is this? This is a six. This is a four. So I'm looking for my best, looking for my best point so that I can start kind of drawing these feathers in. Because that's almost what you're doing. It's kind of like a it's a little bit of like negative painting you'll see in a sec here but they do they kind of get nice little pointy tops and then what I do get a, maybe another row going how do you know how long to make your strokes um I um, just based on uh, the illustration that I'm that I did. That was in the pencil. I think you can see the pencil lines in the beginning. Yeah. If you go back, you, they're not as heavy, but you can see them. And all I'm doing, see, I'm trying to keep this where we can see it. Jeez. Troublemaker. And all I do is kind of come in. Now, as we get like farther down, the feathers actually kind of get bigger and looser. I start my my line work gets fainter and fuzzier. So you can kind of see it. And before this all dries, what I do want to do is Again, I'll come in and just kind of decide what's going to be a little bit darker. And I just kind of blend it in a little bit till I get what I want. Till I get what I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No? All right. No. No. <laughs> Fine. All right, so at this point, I almost want to go ahead and um, do the background. But I need to, um, there is a little bit of work I got to do yet. Can you and keep it, just it on seems like a, There you go. Yeah, it seems like it's whatever angle I'm at is not the angle conducive for me for sketching and painting and stuff. Left-handed is hard. It's always backwards. Well, switch hands. It's too late. The nuns didn't beat me enough. Actually, I was like the one of the first uh, 
of the next uh, generation of kids that didn't have to change hands, you know? So, thank you, Vatican II. Sure. Well, that worked out in our favor, huh? Well, I'm not, I'm not a clerk somewhere at a shopping center. Not that, you know, that isn't a fun job and everything. But if they would have tried to change how I write, I'm sure that would have affected how I draw. Because it would have to be Satan. All right. So that little bit of shadow under under there, just see how it kind of three-dimensional alizes. How's that? Three-dimensional alizes his head a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of, the back of the head, the, the feathers get to be a little bit longer. As you get to the front, though, you got to, you got to start shortening them. Or it'll look like he's got a toupee. What? But something like that. All right. So it's funny how I, I do. I like to, that little bit of wash just kind of knocks off that hard edge. So at this point, what I want to do is I, I want this to dry up. We got this area down here that has already been, everything down here has been dry. I'm going to go ahead and put some background in. So, Mr. Hicks. What do you think for a, I'd like to do a deep background. What do you think? Uh, oh, Something. maybe some dead grass, some no, 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 come on now. I'm being sincere. I was actually thinking, you know, almost, I don't want to do like black or indigo. Yeah. But. I mean, green always looks good with nature. Do it yeah. with a dark forest green. I'm actually thinking too if I mix that green with a you know, with a blue or something also. A yellow green and then like a dark green and then maybe a, a very dark blue. I'm gonna go ahead and wet this area up real quick. You're not quick. And I I hesitate, honestly, to make it too wet because then you're sitting forever waiting to see if this is going to work or not. But I'd like to see a really rich, robust kind of color around this guy. Sounds like coffee. All right. All right, I'm back there. Okay. So, I'm going to start with a real heavy application of sap green. I wasn't kidding, was I? That's pretty heavy. <laughs> If you see letters emerging, that's just the uh, watermark. All right, so I kind of wanted to try this. That doesn't seem fair that their watermark appears if you use their paper. <laughs> I always thought it was, uh, I always tried to get it in the painting. Because I always thought it was that, when I was young, I always thought that was a sign of, look guys, I'm using the best of the best, you know? Yeah. According to me, anyway. So as you can see, it's very wet, and this is the time you can kind of pick it up and move it around if you don't like what you're seeing or you 
you know, if it's wet enough, it'll move and you can have a little fun with it. But uh, right now, I kind of like what's happening. I kind of like this dark and then this weird kind of little uh, glow. That's not the water. It's actually lighter there. And I kind of like that. I'm thinking if I can hold on to some of that so it looks like the woods has, you know, uh, sparkles of light in it. How's that? Sparkles. Huh. All right. So I'm going to leave that alone there. I'm going to let it dry up a little. And I'm going to keep going here. Just go up over, up and over. Huh. Sorry. That used to be, that was my brother's laugh. I think it might still be, actually. He doesn't want it back? Uh, it was it was just he used to he, he back in the day uh, he was a a bit of a drinker and uh, when he drank he laughed like he giggled and it was it was awesome you know uh, so we all mastered it you know <laughs> we all wanted to learn how to laugh like Victor anyway. Yep, and that's why kids know, want me to uh, just work on YouTube and not teach them in real life anymore. These stories are really just wrong. So this is uh, one of the greens I pulled out. Is uh, I believe it's a Cascade. Mm, maybe not. No. Yeah, I'm going to have to check. Are you eating? No. I'm painting my little butt off here. I mean, you're slapping some green in the background. Come on. <laughs> but it's going well. So what it does, too, is it also, you really start to realize... Do I have enough value on my bird? You get that background in, it gets interesting. All right, well, keep going. Looks like I'm gonna be ordering a few new colors here. That was not wet. So, you got time if you run in and Splash some water on it. You won't end up with... So, you want to wet it. The reason is, when you go to put your brush down, if it's dry, sometimes it, the, the way you smack the paper with the brush, you actually see it. You actually see that line. That's with some staining colors. It'll look like a brush. You know, the tip of your brush. So, that's why I, I recommend, you know, if you're doing... Large chunks of uh, of surface here, you know, wet it, get it nice and juicy, and get working. All right. So anyway, getting there, getting there, getting there, coming around slow. As you can see, that light area is still highly reflected right there, but maybe you can kind of see now. I kind of left it. I just, I, I kind of like the idea of having a little light there. The other thing I was going to mention is, wow, let's get the water. Um, noticing when you're when you're doing, you know, wildlife. If you're doing a specific bird or a thing, you know, where the eye is is very important. That's what kind of gets your uh, placement on the page. Is where the the eye is located. If you divide the picture into thirds, three across, three down, it's usually that one third in, one third down. So it could be here or down here too on either one of these. Um, so it's just that's where you want the eye. And and if it isn't exactly on it, I'm not saying it has to be exact science or anything, but you will be surprised how it helps the composition. Anyway, 
That's my lesson in drawing. Now, I have noticed now that you've added a lot of color to the painting and the paper's not as white, uh -huh. the exposure has changed on the camera because oh. the gray of the bird is now stark white. You're right. You're right. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Can I turn down the light a little? It's going to... You got to change the exposure, and I don't know how to do it with that particular. Because if you turn the light off, it just the camera tells it. It's a, I mean that helps a little bit, That's but I don't know how long it'll hold before yeah. the camera adjusts again. But we can try it. That yeah, looks I think, better. Yeah, I think you can almost see things again. But yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, just a bunch of it got wiped out, didn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So another color that is sometimes fun, I don't know if I want to take a chance, um, with green, if you're you know trying to get some shadows and some fun values or whatever, is uh, kind of a red-violet. I was thinking we could almost test that, but am I still on the page? Mm-hmm. Getting there. You're getting there. But I think I do want to try, I just want to see, it just definitely darkens it up into an almost, uh, almost, almost black, sorry. I just wanted to, because I can always yank it back out real quick, that's why I picked the corner. just wanted to see if I was going to like it. That's the trouble. You got you got to know your paint. You got to know your colors. So I like this. What's happening back here too? See these little blooms? Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just cool, you know. And that's what I you know that's what I shoot for. I throw paint in, and then you sit and watch the paint dry. People get up and leave, you know. It's like no, that's like the most important time to be keeping your eye on what's going on. Because you have the opportunity to go, oh, no, no, I don't think so. So I just put in a, I just pushed in a bunch of. Uh, we don't know that because we can't see shit. Oh, how Thanks. does that keep happening? Because you keep pulling it closer to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So I'm just. Uh, Thinking I gotta move quicker here. Or this will be a two hour video. And I think I need the real dark. That dark green. don't want his nose to disappear so I'm thinking I really got to get this dark okay and I think at this point I'm gonna do that a little bit I just want to see what it's going to do. Is and right now, like I said, it's wet. It's kind of weird, especially under the camera. Now down here, I'm getting a bloom that I'm not sure about. So if I add any more water to this, I got to be careful. I'm just going to continue making more blooms. Sometimes you can just kind of sp spread it out. All right, so I got that. I think the only other kind of dark area I wanted was kind of something to kind of continue through from that. And it don't have to be that big or anything. Just ta-da. 
All right. That bright white spot with the hard edges really bugs me. Which one? Straight down from his tail feather. Yeah. Here? That's a yep. poop. It's a poop. Looks like it. Looks like the paper got scratched. Yeah. A lot of times I leave those. Makes you it would. feel like. <laughs> For me, it makes it feel like it's a watercolor, you know? Anyway, there. But it also means now I'm going to have a bloom. Like I said, more often than not, fixing something usually <laughs> ends up being worse than the thing itself. <laughs> so I always try to warn people, live with it. It's not so bad. All right. Again, I'm spinning around and around. So I know you guys are having trouble seeing what is done because of the water. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go blow dry this. So I'm going to pause right here for station identification. And just give me a minute and we'll be right back. So, Yay. all right, everything's dry. And uh, I took the tape off because uh, the blue was really uh, kind of messing with the, the green. It was looking kind of ugly. So when I pulled the tape, I'm not going to mess with the background anymore. I was kind of happy with it, but it just looks so bad. I thought this would make it a little easier to see, and I, and I think it does. It looks, uh, looks a lot better without the blue tape on it. And like I said, I'm going to be working mostly on the interior of the bird. So getting back to this now, uh, by putting that much value into the background, I could have went with something light, and, but, you know, Mark forced me into something, uh, some deep forbidden color here. Um, was that you? Nah, yeah, I, I, always. Yeah, it's always your fault. Twist your Maybe. arm and yell at you till you do what I tell you. Yeah, I want, I want green. Anyway, so when that happened, basically, um, you know, the values in the bird kind of, you know, flattened down a little bit. So it needs a little more value. It needs a little punch. Uh, the blue, especially a blue bird, man, they're, they are so intense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give the blue another coat. And then we'll uh, kind of push in some negative space uh, feathers uh, on the uh, chest, on the uh, burnt sienna looking color there. But first, I'm going to start with the blue. Um, I have pulled out a little, uh, I've pulled out a lot of the ultramarine blue, which I think is very pretty when it's wet. <laughs> I wish it was as pretty. Anyway, and but I'm going to also throw in, like I did before, I throw in a little bit of the uh, uh, phthalo blue. Very intense blue. Just trying to kind of punch that blue up a little bit. So, I'm going to rinse it out first. I am going to just kind of, I'm not going to seriously wet it. I just like to put a little water down so when I start scooching this paint around, it moves. So let's give it a try. See, scooching. That's going in the vocabulary book. Scooching? Yep. Yeah. Good one. That's nothing new. It's Come probably on. already in there. Not for watercolors. Oh, you have a special watercolor dictionary. I did not know. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what I do is I teach all my kid, uh, kids, adults, doesn't matter. I, I, I teach them all with the wrong words. So they have to come back to me. Hmm. It's they're ingenious, like, I tell you. They're like, Mr. Keith, I told people what you taught me, and nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> they can't help me. They're not as wise as you. Uh, all right, so as you can see, it's wet. All right, but I do. I got a little, a little more color on it. It appears a little brighter in my universe. I'm just uh, hitting the back of the head with a little more uh, value. I'm just going to pull some of this down now. Hopefully, I'm not. Where am I at? 
How's my shadow? Yeah, you have no shit. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I did for a bit there. <laughs> so, like I said, all I'm doing is just kind of hitting the color. And this will dry lighter. It always does. It's uh, it's watercolors. Some would say 40% lighter. Um, Almost everyone would say that if they knew. But yeah, they do. They they drive forty percent lighter. So that's why it's always amazing when you're painting them. They look so good, you know. It's like, wow, water. This is amazing. And then they dry, and you go, oh, it's not quite, not quite what you were hoping. But that's the trick to watercolors: uh, finding those values, finding the right values. So as you can see, I'm just kind of coming in and punching up here and there. I'm leaving that little bit of brown. Well, it's hard for you to see, but it's a little bit of brown in I left in the uh, in the feathers. And then down here, I'm just kind of getting two or three feathers showing. This white here, I don't, I am going to kind of hit that because I think it's distracting so i'm going to flip up flip this over a little bit all right a lot Whoa. yeah exactly and all i'm going to do is i'm coming in i don't want that white line i think it was kind of distracting so i've really nailed that so there now it's sitting up again yay all right now the other thing is whoa <laughs> Oops. <sighs> Some people. I know, I know. But perhaps with this uh, Mr. Clean Scratchy Pad. That wouldn't have been an issue if you'd have left the damn tape on. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. No, it's good. Don't worry. It's good. It's good. Anyway. All right, where was I? Now I'll be sitting in a damp spot. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of, uh, of magenta, a little purple to this. Because I'm going to do those uh, feathers that are kind of under the bird, the tail feathers and the, you know, the insides of the two wings. Um, I'm also going to add just a hair of indigo. And I'm just going to... Alright, am I trying to stay out of the light? Yeah. So Mark, is it me or is it is it always that shiny? What the paper? Yeah. Yeah, when you first put water down. When we did that in the past with real real cameras and stuff. Well, not so much because so what's happening here is your light source is on the camera and it's pointing straight down. So yeah. anything flat and white is reflecting directly back into the camera. Oh. Where when we did it, uh in my studio the lights were on an angle and the camera was straight down so lights linear right it reflects straight so straight when up. it was coming in from the angles it was bouncing back out on angles not going straight into the camera we had a little but not as much right okay so like this would be solved if you put a lamp on each side of your workspace instead of turning the light on the top camera or uh, if you moved by a window or something. So, like I said, the light wasn't reflecting straight in and straight back out. Okay, so next time... Move your desk to the window. Well, the paint I, outside. Was gonna, I was going to go get another light, I think. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think I can get this to a window. 
I mean, I see a window right behind you. Yep, yeah, there's a big old couch in front of it. Who the hell does that? Couches go on windowless walls. I have, uh, I have what I call a unusual uh, 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 place. Mm. Um, things from 1842. Um, I love this house. So I, I live in part of it, and uh, I just uh, doesn't look old, really, but. You know, there's very odd things about it. You know, the way the walls kind of, you know, lean. I don't know. I just well, that's I love, it was it I was the, built before they had bubble levelers. Well, yeah, no, actually, I think it's just it's what 200, you know, uh, 180 years old kind of thing. It's sinking so, into the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. I I, I think this thing is fun. Not haunted or nothing, though. I was kind of hoping there'd be a, you know, some story that went with it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the landlord, she kind of checked it out, and this was uh, the property of a gentleman that uh, sharpened saws. So this uh, area where I live was big on uh, lump. Uh, wood coming down the Huron River. So right now I'm just uh, painting in these feet while I'm waiting for a couple other things just to dry up so I'll be safe. And I'm just using indigo and I could work really hard and put uh, highlights um, but <laughs> what I do do, this sounds weird, is I like to put a little water in a in a bunch of paint like that so that I can get sharp little edges. So my my little bird feet don't look uh fluffy, you know. You want some I thought, nice crispy I thought all birds had yellow and orange feet. No. Cartoons lied to me again. Yeah, again. That is a cartoon. We've talked about this. See, if you never go outside, you know. I got to deal with the sun coming in my windows. Last thing I need is it touching me outside. <laughs> and there's, there's what are those things called? Uh, bugs? Uh, no, they're bigger than bugs. Uh, people. People are oh, outside. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to deal with them, too. Just don't look them in the eye, man. They won't respond to you. All right, so I put those little feet in. Yay. And now I want to make sure that I'm... Yeah, I think it's dry enough. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some of the feathers. It's kind of like doing a negative image. Negative, uh, negative painting, which I'll explain. You have some splaining to do, Lucy. All right, so basically, i got to find a spot I can do it. Ah. So basically, I'm coming in, and it might look like I'm just outlining, but what I'm going to do, give me a sec. So I kind of do a few of them, right? And I'm going to come in underneath then and just kind of blend away. You got to be quick about this because if you take too long, you'll just have outlines, you know, which isn't horrible. I mean, there's all kinds of styles, ways of doing things. This is just kind of one way I do it. Then I'll come in, maybe I'll add a little more paint. Here and there, I like corners. And that'll pop those feathers up. So then I'll just kind of go up again. I think I'll just kind of do it again. Do it again. All right. I'm just going to come around this bird. And as I'm coming around the front, I'm not going to do every feather. I'm just going to kind of apply... 
some lines to indicate that it's kind of going going around a corner yeah going around a a, a round bird how's that mm -hmm. you're, you're not helping me at all are you birds aren't round they're actually very square if you take their feathers off people don't know that you know what this is how this is how rumors get started it's or, only or, a rumor or, or, it's not true or possibly conspiracy theories mm -hmm. of why birds birds aren't even real they're surveillance devices by the government i was thinking it was by reptiles but okay mm -hmm. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are living below the ground. Oh my God. And they use birds as their secret spies yep. and messengers. They're still, they're part of the family. Mm -hmm. So you can see as the, as it dries around, you know, I add a little color, a little water in there, and it just kind of sharpens those, uh, those uh, feathers out a little bit. So um, I guess I was about to do more. So what I was going to say, too, is I did forget to mention I added a little bit of quinacrin and gold to the uh, burnt sienna. So see how I do that? I come across, and then I'll just come in, and I'll... It's like leaving the top of the line and bleeding away the bottom of the line. See how they just they start popping out. So you're creating drop shadows. Yes. That's another way of putting it. Uh, I like that better than negative painting. That actually makes sense. All right. So up under the neck, I'm going to go. And I'm just going to... You don't want to have... You, mm, mm, how do I say this? You don't want to have to put in every stupid feather. So you kind of want to just give it the feeling that you're hitting. All right, ready? Just going to blend that up a little bit. So I put some short strokes in there. And that's to just kind of represent that those feathers are, you know, obviously not as big as these over here. And that'll be this uh, uh, true on the chest also, as I come across the chest there. And when you get comfortable, you... You do a couple rows or three rows and get a get a brush and wet it. All right. A little more burnt sienna. I'm coming around the edges. sort of in here again I'm working just a little bit shorter huh I'm just gonna wet them a little bit I'm going to let that dry. Let's see what happens. Um, yes. I'm sure you'll be shocked too. Um, the other thing I wanted to work on was getting a little bit more value along the, on the head. Just to kind of... Alright, sorry. <laughs> Yeehaw! So we just want to get a... You don't have... Again, you don't have to do every feather. What I do is I'll do uh, some of the feathers. Some I'll do as value, so there'll be thicker strokes. And others I'm actually doing the fine, the fine lines. And I'm thinking, 
might take a little bit of just a little bit of a red or a cat orange and what I'm trying to do is uh, by using a negative not a negative what is it complementary what I'm trying to do is get a little shadow out of it so it's a lot darker because I got plenty of blue here <laughs> I need some of these lines to pop out a little bit. All right. Again, I don't want super hard. I'm just going to take a little bit of water and just kind of knock it down a little bit. Now around the eye, I don't leave that. I don't leave that white white. I just wanted that to dry. So now I'll come in and just touch around the eye with a little bit of blue, just to knock that white off. Kind of embeds it, <laughs> embeds it better into the head. Okay. Seeing if I can get, I want to get a little violet into this, his head too, because I have it here and there. All right, here we go. So I, I'm kind of using it in the shadowed areas. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you want it feeling. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want it feeling like it's. Covering the feather behind it, covering the feather behind it a little bit. You don't have to show it all the time. You just you want to give it that feeling as it's coming around the around the body. Um, the other thing I want to try also was I did shadow down here, but I kind of almost need just a little more here and there. Is gonna go straight across. E. There, he's rounding up a little bit now. The other thing I want to try, kind of finish this up now, is uh, a little bit of indigo, a little bit of the brown, burnt sienna, whatever I call it, and I just want to. push in a few cracks and crevices. Just a little more shadow. So I just grabbed a little of the purple. Just, it'll be in there. You, it'll, you'll see it when it dries. Well, you won't because I'm ending it right now. Bye. Bye. Not fair. Anyway, so this is, I'm hoping, to me, this is pretty close. I, I Honestly, what I would do then is I, I would let it sit and uh, I would wait a little bit and probably touch it up or, you know, play with it. Um, I really do recommend that you you let your painting breathe a little bit. And while you're doing it, too, it's a, you know, maybe not on such a little one such as this, but on some of the bigger ones, you know, definitely. You want to kind of get away from them. Stand back. Watercolors are not supposed to be seen from, you know, a foot away. You want to get five, about five foot away and, uh, and then take a look at your painting and see how you're doing. Anyway, I didn't that's, know that. All my stuff looks better from five feet away. Now you tell me. That's a, well, that's what my mama told me. 
<laughs> it's old Keith. Get father back, you know. Come on, back, back. Anyway, um, <laughs> now close the door. Okay, <laughs> go play with your friends, you weirdo. Stop drawing all day. <laughs> Put those people out of paint. You don't know what you're doing. Anyway, I want to thank everybody and uh, Mark. Thank you. And um, anything, anything you want to. As always, guys, just check the description there's all kinds of links to all kinds of good stuff materials the original photo of this bird for you to follow along or attempt on your own and uh we will see you next time all right thank you bye-bye